As part of our work looking at bespoke automotive design activity within DG Design, uh, I wanted to cover a specific walkthrough of ERED technique. Um, it's a very straightforward technique. It's about producing VRED images using very simple backplates. It's about introducing uh, environments and environment modification, looking at the, the default environment, but also playing around with HDRIs a little bit and starting to look at the material and environment settings. And when it comes to render outputs, looking at render IDs and what you can begin to do with those when you post-process the image. So the kind of technique that I'm introducing uh, for me was loosely inspired by the look of traditional uh, Canson paper artworks, which is where you take a, a piece of coloured paper, Canson paper, and you start to layer it up with highlights and shadows so that the, the vehicle or the product um, looks like it's sort of popping out of the page, growing out of that background colour. Now, I've got a friend in the industry called uh, Mike Gillette, who's um, been producing these traditional Canton paper artwork drawings for uh, a number of years now. I've been following him on Instagram and I'm blown away by the work that he does. And I wanted to try and capture something of the style and flavour of that in my own work. Uh, so I've been playing around with this technique in V-RED on and off for, for a couple of years now. Uh, first used it with the Tyrrell projects when I first got started and more recently with the uh, Ferrari 512 images and uh, the, the Porsche 911. And I like the technique because it's very flexible. Um, it allows you to create a very sort of clean auto art, almost a, a poster style image. Um, that there doesn't doesn't need to be any background distractions at all, or you can develop the graphic of the backplate if you want to. Uh, but the emphasis is on on colour and the relationship of the background colour with with the vehicle, be it contrast or to match. So this technique started to feel quite appropriate when we started to talk about the nine one four project and doing the sort of the launch campaign for it. Um, the, the whole project is around uh, offering customers very much a, a bespoke design solution. It's about customising the colour and the trim, even down to changing uh, details on the car, such as uh, the wheels, uh, wheels and tyres that, that they want, they want on the vehicle. Um, so we, we almost wanted a, a, a graphic style that, that could link a whole series of, of different looking cars together. Uh, to tell that story, that narrative of, you know, you can basically have it your way, you can have what you want. Um, and we, we got going and we produced a, a whole raft of different images, looking at through the lens of potential customers, yeah, how, how they'd maybe spec the car, some, some wild and, and wacky versions perhaps in some respects. Um, and when we started to push these images out, when they first went out on LinkedIn and on my Instagram account and on 1511s as well, uh, I started to get approaches from some of the students that I've recently been uh, supporting, but also VRED newbies. They're sort of looking at, at this technique and go, well, well how, how are you doing that? In, in some cases, it, it looks like you're using semi-transparent shaders on the car, the way it sort of blends into the background. Uh, what are you doing? How, how does the technique actually work? Um, it's actually a very, very straightforward technique to use, and I don't want to over-rev it, but the great thing is, is that it opens the doors to all sorts of experimentation, and I've used it in a variety of contexts on a number of projects I've done, so I wanted to give you a, a bit of a brief walkthrough of that and to kind of point to, to where you could take it yourselves. Okay, so to give you a bit of a flavour for how this works, we've got our brown car in the standard V-RED environment, Nothing particularly special about the setup at this stage. The, the environment is the default one you get within V-RED. Uh, the car's been set up with a brown shader at the minute. And if we come into, uh, let's scroll through to the V-RED demo section. We've got a brown car in here. Uh, it's, it's basically set up with a switch on it so that we can change the color of the car paint. Uh, um, for the sake of argument, let's say we're gonna be looking at doing a new car. Um, based around maybe a sort of denim-y kind of colour. I'd gone online previously and looked at Canson paper and I downloaded this, which maybe gives you a flavour. It's just a very sort of medium sort of blue washed out colour, which I'd sort of replicated in Photoshop and applied a little bit of grain to. So that's going to be our back plate for this, although it doesn't need to be. You don't have to have noise on there. You could just leave it as a regular flat blue colour. But for the sake of this 
tutorial, we'll say that's going to be our back plate. Uh, and we want to just get the car set up so it looks like it's part of that, that colorway. So popping back into VRED now, uh, if we actually go into the scene and we look at our, uh, our scene plates, we can see that we've got the chocolate, the brown, the existing scene plate in position, but we want to make a new one. So let's simply just go create back plate. Let's go in here, go to where we're working. Let's scroll through. God, I always ask to do this when you try and talk and click at the same time. So VRED. Just go into uh, backplates and go, yeah, let's open that up. So we've got that running in the scene now. So that's that's the start of it. And obviously the, the colour match isn't isn't right at the minute. So it's a simple case. So let's make a create material. Let's say we're going to make it a metallic car paint. And let's use our tags to make sure we're working in the same area. So we're working with VRED demos and we click out and click back in. That's there, add that to our switch. So it's in there. So we're playing around with that now. We're playing with the metallic car paint. And really it's a case of looking at the base color and maybe grabbing some color references out the back. Look at the front and again, grab a little bit of that. So currently they're set up the same, but we can kind of adjust the values relative to one another, play around with that, get to the point where we're kind of happy with it and spin it around. Um, to just give you a flavor of how that looks. And if we hit ray trace now, we get a feel for how that's starting to come out. And by, to be honest, a lot of it's sort of experimentation. You know, you, you can play around and just get it so it's sitting nice. So you get, as you pan around the car, just even with the standard lighting environment, you get that nice effect of sections of the bodywork sort of just washing out in places into the background with these sort of highlights kicking it forward. And for me, visually, you know, I just find that's that's a very nice way to take in the data, you know, even compared to that, you know, where the background can be distracting because it's variable based on different viewpoints. This gives you something just nice and uniform. So to just soak up the model and enjoy what's, what's going on with the design rather than being distracted by everything else in the scene, just be able to present it cleanly. This works well, and that, that's the basis for the technique uh, that I've been using. But obviously, we can obviously play games within that. You don't have to use your standard studio environment at all. You can, obviously, if we just turn the scene place off a second so we can see what's going on, uh, turn off ray trace in a second, come back into it, into our materials library. If we're looking at the environment channel, obviously, we've got the standard studio environment in there. But also running within within this, I've, I've duplicated it and assigned a HDRI channel. So again, it might be for the sake of argument, you've got this as your reflection map, but you, you don't want to show it in the seat, show it in the street scene. So you can just obviously re-engage the scene plate. Uh, and you get a different sort of quality of lighting, um, which you can play games with the values of. But in some cases, depending on the HDRI, yeah, that, that can add a little bit more to it, but, but you might find that in terms of just simple graphics and being able to read the form, read the context of what the design's about. To be honest, the, the VRED standard environment, standard studio, I find they more often than not really works nicely for me. But pardon me, sometimes what I'll do is maybe play with the brightness a little bit. In here, depending on, on what effect I want, want to achieve, you know, you can play games with the contrast. You know, it's, it's, it's all in there. There's, there's a million one things you can do to really sort of play with it. But it's a case of working out for you what, what really helps sit your design into the background, what helps communicate it. Um, I do sometimes add additional directional lines, but, but to be honest, for the most part, for, for these kind of images, I tend to just like to keep things simple. Uh, and I find that that works pretty well. Um, so once I got to this stage anyway, uh, I'll normally get into setting up uh, an output rendering. Uh, and one of the things that I'm keen to stress, and, and again, I've talked to uh, various people about this, uh, some of the students that have approached me for, for inputs. When I'm looking at materials, uh, I'm always keen to work in making sure that I'm using render IDs. So if, you, if you're unfamiliar with render IDs, I can... Uh, just highlight the, the benefit of those. These are the, these are the clown passes, uh, which I've just dragged that across onto the main screen so you can see it. So basically within VRED, 
every shader you can assign a render ID to. Um, th this image lists out what all the render ID numbers mean. You know, you, you're looking at it in VRED here, you've got a material ID in here that's currently set to naught. Uh, that's referring to this value, that's the default, so it's just black. But obviously you can change the value of these numbers and it basically means that as it renders out, each section of bodywork that you colour code with the render ID will come out according to one of these colours. So what that is giving you is differentiation in your rendering. So when you post-process it and pull the files together, it's very easy to sort of mask specific regions. So we'll set this one up with a, a render ID of of one in there, so we know that that's going to come out with the red for the material bodywork colour. And you basically go through the model from end to end and get it set up with render ID, so you've got colour distribution in there so you can find what you want. And then when you're ready to go, it's simply a case of going into your render settings, uh, which we can do from down here, uh, set it up as a sample test rendering, make sure you've got your beauty channel on and your material ID channel on. Make sure your output, display output, let's just show the snapshot frame to just make sure we can see it. That's that yellow border running around the edge here. Um, and as you pan around the model, you can, you can see that. But that yellow border as defined by having the snapshot frame on is the region that will actually get rendered in the scene. So it's important, obviously, that your uh, aspect ratio of your backplate matches your, your render size. So I know my backplate is set up to be 3000 by 1688, and that aspect ratio is what this render set up to be. So for now, let's hit render, based on that view. Uh, let's go into our renders directory that I've set up, and just go plain white, let's go blue, let's go console, set, set, blue, A1. Right, let's just hit go on that. And once that's rendered, I'll come back to you guys and we'll talk through uh, post-processing. Okay, so now we've got our VRED rendered done, which uh, consisted two parts. We've obviously got our beauty pass and we've also got our, our render ID. And obviously in this one, you can see that I set the render ID up such that we've got separate colors for the windscreen, for the bumpers, for the brake discs. Uh, and what that means is that when we uh, put that, overlay that, if I go into here and bring up layers, we overlay that in our thing. We've, we've got a very adequate means of, of being able to sort of very carefully pick uh, certain details of the car if we want to. Uh, quite often you'll find that you don't need a render ID, but while you're working out lighting schemes, you may find there's some areas that just don't quite sit right. It's like from certain view angles, this brake dish shader looks a little bit too light. But the nice thing is, with the render ID, uh, I can go in and very easily lasso these regions. Yeah, maybe just go in and pick the constituent elements of the disc. And then with a select a little bit of, select modify feather. Let's get a little bit of feather on the edge. Maybe a value of one pixels to just soften it off. What I can then do is then go back in and adjust my levels or brightness contrast to either make that more pronounced or less pronounced. I kind of want to lose the disc slightly more into the background. Uh, I don't want it to be so dominant in the scene, but you know that's that's it with the levels on, that's it with the levels off. So you'll see for, for actually picking things and going round, round the final render and just making those last little tweaks to the way the lighting's set up, this works pretty well. Um, render ID is always useful and again if you want to maybe play games uh, with the background maybe you don't want it completely plain maybe you want some kind of squiggle in there or some sort of fade running over the top of it but obviously you want the car to pop so what you can do again is use the render ID you can select the region outside the car yeah and then coming back to that layer if we again go select modify feather a feather of 0.5 on there, and if we use that as a mask, then when we actually start to look at that, you can see that I've masked the area, so the car now pops from the background. So, yeah, so in post-processing, you can do these kind of tricks. Maybe, again, you can do the same kind of thing with a squiggle. You want to position a squiggle. I don't know why you particularly want to, but maybe you want to get a bit of that sort of old-school sort of marker vibe. Maybe you want a bit of a squiggle going off on that side. Maybe it's sort of something like that. I don't know. 
but again, you can use your render ID to select the whole area. And then when you go on your squiggle layer and hit mask, it'll mask out the area around the car. So you get, you get that kind of effect. But anyway, generally as a rule of thumb, I, I try and get my VRED uh, file set up so that the lighting in it gives me what I want. Because sometimes I'll be using it for uh, animation work where obviously you don't want to be going through and modifying frames after the event. But using render IDs, as we'll touch on later on, is, is a really powerful way of being able to sort of modify uh, your image and just tweak settings a little tiny bit once it's, once it's rendered. Um, re coming back to the subject of, of HDRIs, you know, th there's, there's many available on the market if you've got a, 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 bit, a big budget. There's some now supplied within V-Red. There's a, there's a great range. Uh, companies like Domable are getting involved. Uh, they're giving more in the way of HDRI input into the software, which is great. Uh, so if you do want to get those reflection maps, they're there. There's also uh, online, you know, there's websites, there's, there's websites such as HDRI Haven and places like HDRI Skies, where you can get free downloads. They're not necessarily high res, um, but they're free and for mapping on reflections, not, not being used as full environments, but mapping on reflections, they're quite a nice way of doing it. Um, so basically, once you've got this set up, up and running and you, and you sort of start to really understand the relationship between a backplate and what you're doing with reflection maps, you could play all sorts of games. Um, you could go for something that's plain colour or, or slight, slightly textured like this. You could use photographic backplates. You could do something a bit more abstract. I've, I've experimented in the past with sort of quite graphic sort of poster art styles. Uh, and it creates quite a nice sort of dynamic image. You, know, you can sort of layer it up and turn it into a, a poster. Uh, it creates quite a dynamic effect. Um, but really, it's a case of having a play. You know, now that you've got your head around the technique, is go away and have a go. Try try making up specific backplates. In some cases, set up the backplates to suit specific views to give a dynamic feel. But um, all all of this is about going away and experimenting and using these basic techniques as building blocks. To, to basically get more out of the software. So I hope that gives you a little bit of guidance on, on how to set this technique up. But go away and have a play, have fun. Thanks for watching.